Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll discuss about the dentigerous cyst. So, what is a dentigerous cyst? It is basically an odontogenic cyst. That surrounds the crown. Of an impacted tooth caused by accumulation of fluid between the reduced enamel epithelium of dental follicle and the enamel surface resulting in a cyst in which the crown is located within the lumen so what do I actually mean by this? Suppose uh, within the lumen, yeah. So uh, I'll explain. Uh, you uh, just remember one thing, the other names, pericoronal cyst or the follicular cyst. Now I'll tell you by the diagram what I actually mean, okay. Uh, so suppose this is our mandible, all right. And we have an tooth which is impacted. Now, what is an impacted tooth? Impacted tooth is a tooth which has to erupt, all right? But what you see is, over the crown, a cyst-like appearance, uh, like a cyst hap uh, occurs. So, this is the cyst. So, in the definition, what we talked about, it is an odontogenic cyst, all right, uh, that surrounds the crown of the impacted tooth caused by fluid accumulation. There will be fluid accumulation okay, between the reduced enamel epithelium. This is the reduced enamel epithelium of the dental follicle and the enamel surface. Okay. Now what you see is uh, cyst hai, it's in the, uh, the lumen of the cyst, right? That is this thing. It has the crown of the tooth, right? So that is what I was talking about in the last line of the definition. All right. Now coming on to the pathogenesis. Why is it occurring? Okay. Now first of all, what happens is uh, the normal erupting tooth, right? the erupting or the impacted tooth it is covered by a dental follicle which is lined by reduced enamel epithelium okay now what happens is uh, then uh, there are attempted eruptive forces okay now this attempted eruptive forces uh, what they do is they create pressure on follicle create pressure on follicle now, if due to this pressure, there is an obstruction of venous flow, outflow basically, venous outflow, then what we will see is there will be serum transudation across capillary wall. Now, because of this serum transudation, there will be accumulation of fluid. between the follicle and enamel surface and the tooth crown. Now here is the beginning of cyst formation. Now there will be a gradient increase in fluid volume. Now due to this there will be increase in the hydrostatic pressure increase in hydrostatic pressure now this will further lead to the enlargement of cyst we will also discuss what other causes are uh, uh, causing the enlargement of cyst now is it clear right uh, so just to demonstrate it nicely suppose uh, this is my dental follicle okay um yeah so like these are the cells of dental follicle you can draw it in a better way um yeah so uh, this is our dental follicle now it can form into two types one is suppose this is the tooth right so uh, i'll draw the dental reduced enamel epithelium Or 
or it can be This is the intrafollicular type and this is the extrafollicular type. Here you will see that the fluid this will be in this and here it will be basically here okay in the intrafollicular. So yeah, so this is the types of dentigeresis. Now coming on to the clinical features. Now in clinical features, what we see is it usually occurs in the second and third decade of life. And it is more common in males than in females. Now coming on to location, location is very important. First of all, just remember it is more common in mandible than in maxilla. Okay, uh, then talking about the uh, site, uh, it basically occurs in the mandibular, third molar, then in the maxillary canine, then in the bicuspids, okay. Now let's talk about the clinical presentation. So what we see is uh, that this is basically a, a small cyst, slow growing and uh, it, is, it presents as a bony heart swelling causes cortical expansion then it also leads to massive facial swelling and derangement of occlusion then what we see is it causes severe expansion of bone now due to this what happens is thinning of cortical plates now due to this a crepitus like sensation is present this is the keyword in dentigerous cyst okay uh, all right then pain is only when secondarily infected Also, what we will see is in dental arch, one tooth will be missing. It can be bilateral if it is associated with Marotex, Lamy syndrome or if it is uh, with the cleidocranial dysplasia. All right. Now, in the next one, uh, we will see the radiographic features. Yeah. So, in radiographic features, what you see is you see a well-defined, circumscribed, unilocular radiolucency at the crown of the impacted tooth, enclosing the. Now there is a very important feature. What you usually see is uh, whenever there is a dentigerous cyst. Now what it does is it displaces the involved tooth. Now how? Uh, suppose we have mandibular third molar. Now what we will see is it will get displaced onto the ramus region or the inferior border basically of mandible. And if suppose uh, we have some upper tooth, now the upper tooth it can be uh, displaced to the maxillary sinus or even the floor of orbit. Now uh, it usually causes the expansion, all right. So we will see it. Uh, there is also uh, well corticated margins. Also, it can cause the resorption 
of neighboring erupted teeth now remember one thing in the epidemiology it can also occur in association with the impacted tooth as i told it also uh, can be associated with impacted supernumerary tooth also it can occur with odontomes now what are odontomes odontomes are nothing they are basically uh, hematematous uh, proliferation in which enamel and dentin is present that is they have normal structure but they are present in abnormal proportions okay that is uh, sometimes enamel is present in more proportion than normal it should be so uh, we will discuss it later in the odontogenic tumors however i'm just giving you a vague idea about what are odontomes now over here since i do not have space i'll just write it here what do you see is there are three radiological types of dentigerous cyst one is the most common one central second is the lateral and then is the circumferential now yeah i am so bad at drawing but yeah i do try so this is the suppose these are our teeth right impacted teeth central will be something like this now lateral can either be something like this okay uh, also uh, the circumferential will be like this now what is the main characteristics now what does this do is uh, this pushes the tooth away from its direction of eruption pushes tooth away from its direction of eruption now coming on to the uh, lateral one uh, this is very important now what it it usually is seen in a partially erupted tooth uh then what you see is uh, you see mesioangular type of deflection in third molar okay now in circumferential this is basically a 2d image that you can see uh, now let's discuss about the histo of pathology now in histo uh, pathology first of all uh, what we see is since there is reduced enamel epithelium right so what you will see is two to three layers of flattened non keratinized odontogenic epithelium now the coming next line will give you a keyword now what you see is most times there is mucus metaplasia metaplasia in dentigerous cyst now what do i mean by this is there is formation of new mucus cells and ciliated epithelial cells okay uh, then oh, the then uh, we will talk about that uh, if it is a long standing dentigerous cyst then it can further lead to areas of keratinization and dysplastic changes also one more keyword neural proliferation now what do i mean by this is sometimes what you see is there is a bird like proliferation of the cystic epithelial cells now this is very important because this actually causes a lot of complications now complications or uh, what it does is it can lead to squamous cell carcinoma it can even lead to the amyloblastoma or it can even lead to the mucoepidermoid carcinoma differential diagnosis we will mention about okc unicystic amyloblastoma all right uh then uh, coming on to the enlargement yes this is very important uh in this what we will see is palato enlargement can occur if there is excessive cell proliferation that is common sense okay now it is occurring due to the fluid so osmolarity of cystic fluid osmolarity of cystic fluid now i forgot to mention about the cystic fluid of dentigerous cyst now in dentigerous cyst what you see is you see actually 5 gram per cent soluble protein now remembering the color of the fluid uh, cystic fluid is very important now just remember keep it in your head that dentigerous cyst is a straw colored fluid okay uh, then it has many uh, glucosaminoglycans as well you get questions from the, uh, these particularly then it also has many mucopolysaccharides now what are mucopolysaccharides that form the cementing substances of the organs like hyaluronic acid heparin chondroitin sulfate all right uh, so we are done with this now coming on to the uh, yeah so third one is uh, basically if it resorbs the bone okay yeah it's it's quite common understood then 
the hydrostatic pressure we mentioned it in the patho hydrostatic pressure okay yeah so these are the enlargement mechanisms now yeah coming on to dentigerous cyst if it is in children we do marsupialization this is done if the tooth has to be preserved if the tooth has to be preserved usually now marsupialization is um, not done in adults if it is a small cyst enucleation and it, if it is a large then marsupialization plus enucleation marsupialization plus enucleation is the minimal treatment that you can do for a cyst all right these days uh, uh, so uh, yeah so uh, then other things that you can do is uh, decompression orthodontic treatment and so on you can mention about everything okay uh, yeah now coming on to the uh, this is completed but the histopathology diagram um, I'll just show you the histopathology diagram that you can draw um, this is basically uh, this diagram all right so we will show the lumen right this is our reduced enamel epithelium just two to three layers there are very uh, very uh, vast number of mcqs that come uh, asking the number of cell layers that a cyst has so this is a very characteristic feature that dentiger assist only dentiger assist okay it's just mentioning a special emphasis because the question is asked two to three layers is present okay then you can show the collagenous connective tissue so yeah this is the histopathology diagram covered with the notes so yeah thanks for watching i hope you understood